to open up the FMU, you'll turn the key, it opens up, and you'll see two screws are exposed. You have to remove these screws to take off this top panel, which is necessary to put the side panel from the main unit onto the side of the FMU. These screws are going to be off of the unit for the remainder of this procedure, so I recommend placing them if you have a fresh cup or glass setting aside in your installation site, simply placing it inside there and setting it aside so you don't accidentally bump the machine and or the counter surface that you're working on and lose those screws. They're very easy to, to, to lose place of. So you just pull this back. And if you look right here, there is hooks on the bottom that that rests on and it just slips right out. And keep that in memory for whenever you're putting it back in that it's gonna slip back in on this piece. And now I'm gonna shift my focus to the main unit. You wanna unlock it using the top lock on the screen. This, there's no type of locking device. This little flap just pops right up. And then you pull it towards you and it naturally comes up. Let it rest down. And now we're gonna remove these two hoppers. You remove the hoppers by putting your hand on, on the top of the hopper. There's actually a place hold. And then placing your other hand behind it and then abruptly pulling it toward you. And it'll release from the back. What's holding it in place are these two holes with two plastic posts coming up into the holes. And so you wanna make sure that you pull it tight so that if you're removing it and there's beans inside, that it covers up the bean release and allows it to not spill beans all over the place. And I'm gonna do the same thing to the second hopper. If you look just above the grinder plate, that there is a screw here and another screw over here. Now, we're going to loosen those screws, but not completely remove it, just enough to allow the back piece to become loose and be removed. Most of the time, based on the, um, the way that it was manufactured, this might be a little more snug, so it may require some loosening and then pulling and then loosening and pulling, but say eight out of 10 times, you're gonna be able to get a nice release and it'll come off. Just the same as the back panel for the FMU, there are hooks on the back, it just comes backwards and it comes off. This side panel can sometimes be a little tricky. There are place hooks that hold it in, in place going into slots on the actual chassis of the main unit. So you wanna make sure that whenever you're lifting this side piece that it doesn't damage those hooks so that when you replace it onto the fresh milk unit, the FMU, it's able to get seated properly. The fresh milk unit has a plug that is going to connect into the main unit. So as I bring these together, I'm gonna to make sure that I feed this cable through the port, and then in a moment, I will show you how it actually connects to the main unit. When we bring these together, we have to be mindful of the milk line. This is the dispense line from the fresh milk unit to the main unit to deliver our milk product to our drinks. The newer units are labeled FMU milk hose. The older units do not have this sticker and you need to be mindful of where you are putting the hose because if you try to feed it through one of these other ports, you're not gonna have the proper length to make the connection. I'm feeding this through so that I can get it close and then I'm going to scoot this a little bit closer to allow the extra length. You're gonna re remove the waste bin. And you wanna help guide it between the bulkhead of the chassis and the espresso unit. Now, if you notice, there's already some tubing that's going through. You wanna follow the path of that tubing as much as possible to prevent any type of adherence to the seed head. So all I'm doing at the moment is guiding the tubing through and I'm watching in between to make sure that I'm not pinching the tubing as I pull the, the two units closer to each other. You'll notice that there is a female plug 
and on the back of the main unit there is a Mel adapter. So you, you just want to make sure that you're properly aligning the two. After you have it fully seated, you want to take the remaining cable and make sure that it's staying clear of the cavity that is in the back. That's where the waistband protrudes through and if there's anything that it is blocking that area, you won't be able to get your waistband fully seated and the machine will create an error. There's a slot on the inside. You can see the pin is sliding into the slot and that your cables and your silicone hose are free of any obstruction. Tug a little bit on the silicone hose to make sure that it's still free and clear as you bring them together. And you're going to work on the locking pin that is in the front of the machine. Do a second check on the back of the machine to make sure that the lock pin is in place. At this time, so that you do not damage any of the arms or the, the gears inside, go ahead and lower the screen. And then make sure that the machine is aligned. that pin is actually spring-loaded so it'll, it'll pop down into place once you have seated it. So at this point you have successfully mounted the fresh milk unit to the main unit. The network connections are extremely simple. There is a serial port which is connected to a Cat5 cable that runs to the back of the fresh milk unit. You want to make sure that it is properly seated. And then you want to locate where the serial port is going to be plugged in. And you'll hear it pop, it'll be like a, a quiet snap that you'll hear whenever the clip for the serial piece goes into place. And then you want to make sure that you tuck your wires in because eventually we're going to hook up another piece that's a cosmetic piece that's a strip that goes along here. And if your wires are crossed or not properly seated, then that cosmetic piece will not place properly. This is the Unity One Plus, and today we're going to do the power and plumbing. Whenever you first get your Unity One, it's going to ship with various parts and checklists inside of the waste bin. You want to take them out, go through your accessory parts list. Once you've verified everything, you're going to take it out. You're going to have various connections to help you hook up to wherever you're at on site, whether it's a water hose connection going into a filter or directly off of the filter feed. Off the filter feed, straight into the machine, you have a 5 16th hose that's going to run into and all of that is going to connect into a John Gas connection. Then you have your 20P plug that's going to go into the wall. You have 208 volts AC coming out of the wall into the FMU and the FMU is going to daisy chain over into the main unit. So let's get to work. Into the back of the unit, female connection similar to the one that came from the FMU to the main unit is going to be directly behind the water connection on the FMU. You're going to simply bring it and seat it into place and then plug it into the wall. For the plumbing, you have additional pieces inside the fresh milk unit in the milk container. The spout comes right off. Take the container top off. Remove all the pieces. You have some cleaning tablets. We'll get into that later. What we're looking for is the plumbing pieces. 
To complete this procedure, we have locking clips, a tree valve, trimmed hose, and a longer hose to go into the wall. First thing that we're going to want to address is that these John Guest that are already on the machine have a locking clip. In order for the John Guest to function properly, you want to take that locking clip off. And you can do so by pressing on to either side of the clip and then pulling back. And it'll pop off. You have your pre-cut hoses. You want to make sure that they are flush. If they're cut at an angle, you want to use any type of rubber hose cutter to cut it flush. This helps prevent leakage. Press the hose, push it in firmly, you'll fill its seat, and then move to the next side. Take the hose, push it in, you'll fill its seat. Now we'll take the locking clip and put those in place. Now we have two hoses coming from both the FMU and the main unit. And this is going to be our main water supply for the unity. So you'll take the, the T connection, same thing, fill it seat firmly. Fill it seat firmly. Clip it. And clip it. Then you want to take your longer hose that is going to go to your wall connection. Firmly seat that as well. And your plumbing and electrical is done. Our final step of installation is to fill the boiler. So we have to turn the machine on by pressing the on switch behind the drip tray. Turn on the FMU and wait for the system to load. Now that the machine is back on, it's going to have errors on it and it's going to say that the boiler is not completely filled. That's not a problem. We didn't previously have water hooked up to it. So that is an expected error. The way that we're going to fix that is go into the Phantom menu. And you're going to come up to your maintenance menu. We're going to go into Program. And you'll notice that it says Fill Boiler. Now prior to pressing this, you want to make sure that you already have your plumbing hooked up and that your water is actuated. It says press the button. We're going to fill boiler. And it'll start to cycle. You'll hear your pump kick on. You'll hear the inlet valve click and then the water will start coming out. You want to make sure that you have a container to catch the water. If not, it will fill the catch tray, which is okay, but before you proceed to any further procedures such as cleanings, you're going to have to empty that out. And it'll prompt and say that the boiler is filled, and then you press close, and then it's complete, and you'll notice that the Boiler empty air is no longer there. And then you can go to your main menu and you'll see your series of drinks.